fall it's over and now it's time for winter to kick in at least in my region the places where i live the winter is starting to slowly enter its rights and it's starting to paint the landscape with the wider snow so i think it's time for me to record this video where i show you some of my winter photos and i give you some ideas and tips on how to photograph landscapes during winter Hello everyone, my name is Toma. I'm a full-time landscape and travel photographer. This YouTube channel is all about landscape and travel photography. So if you're interested in this kind of topics, make sure to subscribe to see my future videos. And you can also further support me by buying one of my editing courses, either on forest photography or general landscape editing. Or you can join me on one of my workshops in Tuscany, maybe in the Dolomite Mountains. The camera meter is built in a way in which it will make sure you don't overexpose a perfect white area and that means if you have a piece of paper that is white and you try to expose it with the exposure on the center well this means that your image will turn out to be gray 16 percent gray this is the way the camera makes sure that you don't have blown out uh, areas if you measure for those areas and this applies to snow photography so if you're going to photograph in snow because of the whiteness of the snow the camera will think this is this is really bright so i will try to dim down the uh, the brightness of the scene and basically if you expose that on the center then you will have an image that looks kind of kind of gray kind of dark so a good tip is to overexpose your scene with one stop or two stops it depends on how much light and how bright the scene is this was tip number one tip number two is to make sure you pay attention to the reflections that the snow catches it's a very reflective surface and that is why really early in the morning and after the sunset you will see a really strong blue cast now if you like that blue cast then you can go with daylight as a white balance exposure but if you don't like that blue cast and you want to correct it then you can go with cloudy and if that's not enough you can go furthermore with shade as a white balance let's start with this first photo that is a drone shot and it's a different perspective now the way I like to photograph when I'm using drones is to um, be straight above certain elements and that is because you have a perspective that is unique you don't see things straight from above I don't like photographing with the drone in, in, in this direction I like to photograph straight down now there are occasions when I do uh, photos with the drone but then I'm photographing into the distance and those are times and moments when I really can't get that shot with with my camera if I can get it with my camera I will do it with a camera if not I will do it with a drone but having your camera straight down it it helps you create a really strong feeling you have a really powerful composition in this way because you are seeing elements that maybe these are, these elements are very common to you you see them all day long but see the, seeing them straight from above it can have a different impact on you and in this case and in the case of this photo uh, the blackness of the road enhances that and then I have also have a small parking and that I think adds a lot to the entire feeling of, uh, of the image next photo is this one with the forest and you have that fluffy snow on the on the ground but you have one tree that managed to cap its leaves and just with a with a slight touch in photoshop or lightroom you can turn those leaves into um, bright orange or bright red and i think this really creates impact you have a really strong composition and every time when you have a winter landscape and everything is usually uh, dark or white and I'm saying dark because it can have different colors but it, it kind of shows like a dark uh, element but you have a different one that is the moment when you um, you can add a lot to the scene with the, with that image another photo is this one where I'm standing on the edge of some uh, drop and I'm uh, surrounded by all this white it's a good thing not to have black 
hiking clothes. If you want to photograph yourself and to look good in, in nature, don't wear black clothes. Black clothes will, will make you look so bad. And also don't wear green clothes during summer and uh, spring. But uh, in the winter you can, you can wear uh, either red, orange or yellow. Blue is another color that mm, doesn't work that well because of that blue reflection that the snow has. And also the sky is blue. So if, if you're standing and you're looking in the distance and you have the entire sky in front of you, then you may not look that good. This, uh, this other photo is a monastery is on top of Chahlo mountain. That is the name of the mountain, Chahlo. And it's a really beautiful place. It's really close to where I live. And you have this feeling that you are above the clouds. So when you have low altitude clouds, this happens usually uh, really early in the morning, you can have this feeling of floating. This type of shot works better in winter conditions. I did this shot also in autumn or early spring when you have the most chances to capture these low altitude clouds. But in winter, it looks really good. I, mean, I think it's because the whiteness of the clouds matches the whiteness of the snow and you kind of get an, uh, the impression of an infinity uh, plateau, if you want, like an, inf an infinity pool. So you have this feeling of, of things that are going and going into the distance. And then you have that, that subject, the church, that is um, really the, 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 the center point, the focus point of this uh, photo. Now comes this photo with characters. If you can have interesting characters, then they will work really great. Snow has the ability to make the scene simple. It, it gets away from all, of all the clutter. It's, it's kind of like the same thing that folk does, only on another level. And it's, it helps you making the scene so simple and so focused on what element you want to be focused on that it's impossible not to create an interesting and beautiful photo. And in this photo we had these dogs. They were the dogs that are, are staying at the chalet on top of the mountain and they followed us because probably there was nothing better to do that day. And we were photographing those pine trees covered in snow and at some point they, they appear, the dogs appear, and they're just running towards us. And it was a really good photo. Now, it helps to know that these dogs are not, or the, the animal that it's running towards you, it's not dangerous, and it's a friendly one, and it's a friendly run. <laughs> it helps a lot. As you can see, I had the chance to photograph a really beautiful train, and I also organized workshops where we rent this train for an entire day and the train does whatever we want so maybe some of you are interested in something like this leave a comment below if that's the case but this is a dark atmosphere i wanted to 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 have that feeling because the train huffs and puffs with with, with all the uh, with all the smoke and it creates the this this this, this sensation of raw power but i think that in order for you to 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 capture that, you need a tidal shot. You need a shot only with the train, with all the smoke coming uh, uh, from uh, from the locomotive. Then comes next the next photo, which is also the train. And I, I think the, the the tip is find a vintage train, or at least find a train. And snow, they look so great. But of course, that a vintage train will look better, and it will have that. I don't know, that aura, that feeling of, of, of some times that are lost for us and having that, um, that subject in front of you in snow with all the smoke and the, the surroundings, na the nature, I think it looks, it looks really, really well. And it's a, a scene where you can't go wrong. If you find a vintage train, then it will look awesome. Again, again, let me remind you that I do workshops where we visit the location, uh, the area where this train is, and then we rent the train for an entire day, and the train does whatever we want with it. It stops, we go down, we photograph it, it goes back, it goes front, and we have a really, really good time. So if you're interested in this kind of workshop, we can do this either winter or autumn. This is the best moment to do this kind of workshops. Uh, leave a comment below, and if you are interested, I'll get back to you. 
In winter conditions, inside the forest, I think it's very easy to photograph. I think it's the best moment if you're not an expert in photographing uh, forests. This is the place where you should start learning to photograph the forest. The very reason is because snow covers all the elements that you don't want in photo and it simplifies the composition. Now, it helps a lot if you have a trail that it's been uh, walked on and it it kind of looks like a trail because usually winter or snow tends to cover everything but when you have a visible trail that goes among the trees i think it looks really great this next photo is again a photo from the drone and i'm always looking for graphical elements i really like to see the white of the snow as a piece of white paper and all the other elements that are there is just graphics for me and i try to presented in such a way. For example, I shot this in the countryside of Romania and it kind of looks like a pine tree. It's a, it's a very interesting way of seeing things. Sometimes you may see different elements for uh, what they could be, not for what they truly are. The next photo is again a photo from the drone and you can keep it simple. That is the main idea with this photo. You see I have the forest to the left and the empty field to the right. The field is kind of covered in snow, the forest is not that covered in snow. And you have like a, a, a pure black and white image. This is the pure representation of two tones. You have brightness and darkness. You can present it either way. I think it looks really, really good. The next photo is um, using a technique that I learned from Michael Kenna. It's a long exposure of the cloud. This is not the technique that I learned from Michael Kenna, but what I learned from him is to have my clouds running towards the subject. I saw this photo, I don't know, it was a cathedral, I think in Paris, I don't know exactly. Maybe, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm, I'm wrong, but it was a cathedral, a uh, photo of, uh, made by him, a cathedral, and the clouds were um, having their, uh, their movement going towards the cathedral. And from that moment on, I understood that if I'll be able to capture the movement of the clouds, going exactly towards my uh, focus point, then I will have a really, really powerful way to draw the viewer uh, and to draw uh, his or her's attention towards that uh, subject. This photo is about reflections. Reflections look great every moment, but when you have a mountain, then it's kind of covered in snow, and then you have the sunrise light on that mountain and you have a clean, flat and no wind uh, water surface, I think you can have a really powerful image. I really, I really do reflections. I don't know what it is about reflections, but it, they get you, then they, you, you, you kind of stare uh, and you kind of stare into it. <laughs> and from a technical aspect, you need to be careful because the reflection is darker than the actual object. It's usually, two stops or three stops darker. I Usually I use the three stop and the graduated filter, uh, the soft version, and I kind of make uh, the two areas um, look the same. And again, it's from Chahlo Mountain. It's a mountain where in January I will have a workshop uh, on the plateau over there. And you see, this is another use of dark, gloomy weather. Whenever the weather is bad, that is the moment when you should be up there on the mountain. It can be dangerous and it, it's not fun to be there. It's going to be windy, it's going to be cold. But it's the moment when you get those photos that nobody else does. Um, in the background, you see the dark clouds, the dark fog. If that fog would not be there, then you would see an entire valley and then the, uh, a village down uh, at the base of the mountain. It will not help convey the idea that that in that in the manner that I did in this photo I think it helped a lot to have that negative space over there the the, the thing that that made the photo what it is is that fog in the background that those clouds in the background now I really hope that you enjoyed this video and you liked the tips or and the ideas that I gave you with this winter uh, landscape photography and if you are here for the first time make sure to subscribe if you want to pose a question just use the comment section below 
And if you are already a subscriber, I will say a big thank you to you and to all of you. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.